Joining us today is Dr. John Tickell, medical doctor and international expert on longevity and health and best-selling author. He was speaking at IIR's National Workers' Conversation Summit 2011, which takes place on the 21st to 22nd of February 2011 in Surface Paradise. Hello, John. Thanks for joining us today. A pleasure. Why do so many individuals and companies struggle to address the work-life balance in a bid to reduce stress, and how do you think this can be combated without impacting on productivity? Well, that's almost an oxymoron because productivity is, in basic terms, the bottom line. And if a shareholder, sorry, if a company has shareholders, especially if they're a listed company, have certain obligations to make money for their shareholders, otherwise their share price goes down. So they, uh, you know, the huge concentration in the business world is how do we make more money? And uh, I guess the realisation is starting to filter through to companies that if you want to be an employer of choice, you have to start looking after your people rather than just your bottom line. They're looking at ways and means to do that and make the people feel happier about being part of the business because two, three, four decades ago, companies were machines. They're not anymore because your machines are outdated in two years. But if you turn your people over quickly and the people don't forget are your best asset, then the people doing business with your company saying, you know, what the hell's going on here? I mean, this company has, has lost the plot because people are companies, so you need to look after your people so they become better people and then you'll become a better company. Can you run me through a few simple tips on how to develop winning self-management skills and breaking the stress cycle for a healthier, successful and more fulfilling business and personal life? I guess you could draw a line down the middle of the page and say on the left-hand side is there something the company can do. And I guess the individual is one thing, but the family unit. I'm always a great believer in the family first edict. You know, I've got uh, five kids and lots of grandchildren and uh, been married for 40 years. You only get 20 years for murder. So there's a certain sense of value there and a support system. And one of the things when people are stressed that they need are support systems. And, okay, number one may be a family, but the company is also theoretically a great support system for the person and they have to encompass all shades and parts of the person's life so if the person has got kids and should be home for dinner with them three or four nights a week and never is is that a management problem or challenge for the person or the company it involves the company and therefore you've got to be a little bit flexible as a corporation in looking after your people because there is another side to their life so on the corporate side, you've got to look at the person as a whole person and their interests around them, including family. But as the individual, you as a self-manager or stress manager, it's basically the same thing. People say, oh, I'm an expert on stress management. It's helping people manage themselves better. And I uh, believe in the ACE skills, A-C-E, activity, coping and eating. And in those three areas of your life, if you're an no-hoper and not good at it, the stress is going to get you. Can you run me through the um, ACE program you mentioned and specifically how it's improving everyday life skills? Well, I'm not going to give away uh, my whole presentation because uh, your lovely people won't want to come, but that's what I do in my time on the stage. I run you through the skills that you need and how to hone them and improve them. If I got really simple, uh, I'd say, well, I want you to move your body for 1% of the time it's alive. I mean, 1% of a week, there's 168 hours in a week and 1% is 1.68 hours, which is 100 minutes. And people say, mate, like I'm busy. I've got 100 minutes to exercise. I say, well, that's in a week. I mean, you could go for four 25-minute walks. What? Like when? I say, well, today is whatever today is. It's probably Monday. Uh, diet start on a Monday and you miss that. So exercise could start Tuesday. I mean, tomorrow you can walk outside of your office or get out of your truck or whatever you do in your job and walk briskly up and down for eight minutes three times on a Tuesday and three times on a Thursday because science is telling us that three-eighths of lightly puffing is as good as a 25 anyway and then twice on the weekend for 25. What's your problem? And people say, oh, well, nobody's ever explained it to me like that. And I say, well, how long do you like to sleep? Oh, well, I guess I get seven hours. I say, well, that means you're awake for 17 hours which is 34 half hours a day. So in a week, you're awake for 238 half hours. And you are telling me you can't find four of those to take your magnificent machine for a walk. I mean, you've lost me. So, you know, it's a brief summation of the how we start with your activity patterns. And I don't call activity exercise because exercise in the Western person's mind is I've got to lock myself in a room full of weights or a gym or something, you know? So there's a lot of simple things with exercise and eating I can simplify for your people before my presentation by just saying as kids we're taught there's five food groups in the world and that's ridiculous. Kids can't remember that stupid pyramid. There are two food groups in the world. There's basic food and bonus food. And I will tell you uh, on the stage what basic food is and what's both and you make the decision. Two thirds of the food you put in your face must be of basic origin, uh, what I call low HI, low human interference. 
because most of the food we eat has been terribly interfered with by human beings. Some dietitians talk about carbs. It's not a, carbs not a word. Look it up in the dictionary. It doesn't exist. What America did was take carbohydrates and take the hydrate, the water, out of them and turn real food into muffins and donuts and croissants. So we live on refined processed crap and we're setting our kids up to get diabetes and breast cancer. I mean, I've been to 103 countries around the world and I know how long people live and what they die from and whether they die with clean or whether you might because you're after life expectancy. I know you are, life expectancy. I'm after health expectancy. What's the point in being 87 if you can't hear, can't see, can't move, you've got arthritis and diabetes? What's the point? You know, you need to move, you need to eat some basic foods that are pretty natural that human beings have not interfered with and then you need to cope. The A, C, E, the C is coping. People say, yeah, well, it was a thing called the GFC, you know, and I'm under stress. I say, no, you're not. There's no stress out there to be under. Stress is inside you. And if I put exactly the same pressure in front of five different people, I can get five different stress responses. Coping with life is the biggest problem we have today. I'll tell you during my presentation how you know if you're not coping. People say, well, how will I know? And I say, well, I'll tell you. You know, the muscle spasm, the uh, headaches, migraines, neck pains, back pains, stomach pains, all that sort of stuff. It's your body telling you you can't cope. And there's a lot of other little things that happen too. So if you want a better life, and most people want a better life, there are some little tips and tricks we're going to give to you during the presentation. I mean, did you hug someone you love before you left home today? Did you? Why not? <laughs> Have you uh, climbed some stairs today? Have you taken a deep breath with your diaphragm today? because that will break the stress cycle and bring down your pulse rate and blood pressure. I'll prove it on stage. So these are the things that uh, I'd love to chat with you about from my stage because I don't dispense drugs per se anymore. I'm sick of writing scripts for Valium and Voltaren. Um, I would rather dispense information from the stage that can make your life better. So I'm really looking forward to this and I hope you are too. We're going to have a bit of fun and we're going to change a few lives. John, you're speaking at IIR's National Workers' Conversation Summit, which takes place on the 21st to 22nd of February 2011 on the Gold Coast. What would you like delegates to gain from attending your presentation? From a personal point of view, I'd just say, would you like to look better, feel better, sleep better and love better? And if you've got those four under control and you're the perfect person, don't bother to rock up. But if you would like to improve any of those areas, look better, feel better, sleep better, love better, and just be a better person, then um, I can help you. So I would expect that 90% of the people who walk out from my presentation after I have finished uh, will have a better life. 10%, the other 10%, 5% are, say, oh, you know, I don't believe all that stuff. And the other 5% will be very aggressive and say, oh, you know, like, he's talking about me. But it's interesting, often a partner, a marital partner, will say, ah, he's talking about my husband or my wife. Yeah, we're going to improve the person as a medical unit, as a machine, because we're all born as magnificent machines. So we're going to improve the machine, we're going to improve the mind, we're going to improve your immune system, so you can have less risk of having a heart attack. I mean, in this country, somebody has a heart attack every eight and a half minutes. Uh, if there are any overseas people in America, there's uh, two people a minute. Two people every minute have a heart attack in America and 30% uh, the first symptom is sudden death, which is really hard to cure. So if you want to reduce your risk of heart disease and strokes and diabetes, which is the fastest growing epidemic in human history, and you want to reduce your risks of the three big Western cancers, breast, bowel and prostate, I would suggest you come along and um, we'll have a chat. Dr John Tickell, many thanks for your time today. Absolute pleasure. We'll see you soon.